Welcome again to Arizona Conference Camp Meeting 2021, virtual camp meeting, although we're here with a live audience in Phoenix somewhere uh, next to a beautiful mountain. Uh, I might have just given it away, but anyway, we are so thankful for the host church here and what they've done for us uh, to prepare this special camp meeting. Thank you, each one of you. We have a lot of comments coming in, and I've only read a couple, but a good friend of mine, Chris, who's a great trumpet player and music uh, expert, Expert at Tempe wants to wish everyone a happy Sabbath. Carmen, I believe, oh, I can't remember what, doesn't say what church, but a happy Sabbath from her home, watching at home. And then we have uh, Manny, our own Manny Cruz, says happy Sabbath to you all. And there are some others I'll share later, but Daphne Mary Alice, one of our newest pastor's wives, is wishing us a very happy Sabbath watching from the Chandler Phil Am Church. Once again, welcome to Arizona Academy. I have my wife with me, the lovely Lillian. And, um, you know, we've been married 36 years, and I think I should have used that phrase a little more. I usually just call her honey or sweetheart, but the lovely Lillian wants to welcome you as well. We are so excited that you are all here today, whether it's virtual or here at our church. We want to thank you for coming and joining us for camp meeting. This is an exciting time that we're living in. And we're so thankful that God has provided us this opportunity to come together and to worship him. And we want to praise God and thank him and ask the Holy Spirit to just come into your homes, come through your computers, come through your phones, come here and be here with us so that this Sabbath will bring us closer to the day where we will see him in person. Amen. We'd like to begin, as we should, each of our programs with a word of prayer. Let's ask God to bless us. Father in heaven, we are truly thankful for your love and your goodness. Lord, we thank you most of all for that wonderful gift that Paul calls the indescribable gift in 1 Corinthians, the gift of salvation through Jesus, sending your own son. Lord, bless us today as we listen to beautiful music uh, led by uh, Claudio here as a, our song service leader, Scott Michael Bennett, when he shares a little later on, and especially bless us as we listen to your message, the message of your servant of the hour, Dr. Dan Gerard. Bless him again with a powerful message just as you did last night. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all you do for us. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing all four stanzas of Lift Up the Trumpet. Jesus is coming again. Thank you. 
Beautiful music, praise God. Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. This morning, I'd like to bring you up to date about Arizona Sunshine, a ministry that was started several years ago, now on its sixth year, each year serving multiple cities in this beautiful state of Arizona. As many of you know, Arizona Sunshine provides free medical, free dental care for all those in need. At a time where many people don't have dental or vision coverage, Arizona Sunshine has touched so many lives with this humanitarian outreach. This year we have four Arizona Sunshine events planned for the cities of Prescott, Payson, Sedona, and Kingman. A couple years ago was our first international Arizona Sunshine mission trip to the Philippines where we praise the Lord at the end of this mission trip, we baptized over 500 precious souls and served with free medical, free dental care, over 5,000 souls for Jesus. That's yeah, just unbelievable. We'd like to thank everyone, especially our volunteers, for your continual prayers and support. Was there as though sunshine we could go all day about the incredible testimonies from people we have served? You know, the number one question we get from our guests, why are you doing this? I mean, no one does this for free, this kindness. It's, it is incredible the response we get from those we serve. Even from our volunteers, many say, you know, we came up here to help others and to serve. And at the end of our event, we were so much more blessed by Arizona Sunshine. You know, another exciting aspect about this ministry is this event is designed as an annual outreach. Year after year, in the same locations throughout Arizona, because of this, many of those who come and are served come back the next year and volunteer to help with Arizona Sunshine. Can you say amen to that? The positive impact Arizona Sunshine has on the community leaders and the businesses are so powerful. And we're super excited that many have been baptized as a result of Arizona Sunshine. God has truly blessed Arizona Sunshine and we give him all the glory and honor while we function as the hands and feet of Jesus. You know, in five days from now, Arizona Sunshine would take place in the city of Prescott for the sixth time. You know, if you'd like to volunteer for this ministry, this is your opportunity. Just go to our webpage, you see it on the screen there, ArizonaSunshine.com, and it's not too late to register. Next Sabbath, Randy Fields, our new chair and president of Arizona Sunshine, will give a short report about Prescott Sunshine and share a little bit about the future of this ministry of Arizona Sunshine. Thank you so much for your continued prayer for this incredible ministry of Arizona Sunshine. I want to invite Nyla up as well. Steve, come over and join me and my wife. We have something for you. Now, for those of you who have been around Arizona Conference, well, I've been around the Arizona Conference campaign for 18 years. We have a very special gift. My uh, administrative assistant, Jackie Battistone, has always made sure that everyone got one of these gifts. I'm going to hand you this, Steve. This one's for you. Um, and this is, uh, let me ask you, do you know what the gift is? Can anyone guess? A cactus, and why not? This is the gift, the famous Arizona conference gift to all our guest speakers along with other things, but everyone has to have a cactus. So Steve, when you get up there in Idaho, put this on your mantle, put it on your desk. Remember us as you leave. We're so thankful for the ministry that Steve and Nyla has shared, and not just Steve, but Nyla as well, because Nyla has led out with our nursing for, uh, for the nurses, for our programs at Camp Meeting, as well as uh, for Arizona Sunshine. So my wife has a special gift for her as well. And as all of you know, it takes a team to be a pastor. And when you're a pastor's wife, you're in a fishbowl. So I'm going to let my wife say a few words to Nyla as well. Thank you, Nyla, for all you have done for Arizona, how you have loved people, how you have served, how you stood be right beside Steve every step of the way, loving God and showing and, and just really 
blessing us with your presence. I know that you will bloom where you are planted there in Idaho. Continue to serve the Lord. We're going to see you soon. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. And yes, thank you for your ministry. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face wounds which mar the chosen one, bring many sons to glory. Good morning, church. Did you know that giving is a spiritual gift? Listen to what Paul wrote to the church in Rome. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Now listen to this. If it is giving, then give generously. So this is what Paul is saying, that we all have many gifts. And one of those gifts is giving. And some of us are called to give more and some 
are called to give less. But this is the bottom line. We are all called to give and to give generously. The ushers will be picking up an offering here. But I want you to think with me in the following. What happens when we give generously? According to what we read here from Romans 12, the answer is abundance. When we give generously, there is abundance. Do you remember the story there in Exodus 35? God told Moses, I want you to talk to the people of Israel, and I want them to come and give. Listen to what he said. From what you have, God told Moses, tell them to take an offering for the Lord, and everyone who is willing, bring it to the Lord. Two things here in this story from Exodus 35. Give from what you have. Second, everyone who is willing, come and bring to the Lord. In verse 20, we have the response from the people of Israel. It says, then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the sake of the building of the temple. Everyone. The response was everyone. And then in verse, chapter 36, verse 4, you have the result. There was abundance. To the point that Moses told the people, stop, no more giving. We have more than enough to build the tent. Today I am appealing to your generosity and your willingness to give to the Arizona Conference Advance Offering. This helps evangelism, elementary schools, Camp Java Pines, and our own Thunderbird Adventist Academy. But I want to focus especially on evangelism. Take a look at this. problem, but uh, uh, what you probably, um, if we're able to show it, if not, what you were going to see is a 15, 20 second video of a wonderful event that took place recently at the Salt River, where more than 40 people were baptized in one day for God's honor and glory. And this is why I'm appealing to you today. Let's give generously so that we can continue to build God's kingdom. Remember, it's not how much you give, but how many are willing to give. Let us pray. Father, so today we come before you and continue to worship you, knowing that you are the giver of all things. You have given us life. But above all, you have given us salvation. And so today we respond, whether at home, in the local church, or here in this community, we respond by giving you from what you have given us. So bless this offering, and may its purpose be accomplished as together we continue to build your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Are you enjoying camp meeting 2021? We have a wonderful, beautiful audience here at the church. And I know that we also have beautiful people watching all over the state of Arizona and other parts of the world as well. Now, did you ever imagine, did you ever think that in the year 2021, you could witness and share the gospel and be a light simply, simply by sitting in the comfort of a church or your own home and just clicking a couple of buttons or touching a screen. At this time, we're going to spend a few moments witnessing. Oh, Pastor Manny, I'm scared. I don't like to witness. That's all right. You're going to do it the way that I enjoy doing it a lot of times. I want you to take out your smartphones, please. And if you're watching at home, if you're on your computer, if you're um, on your tablet, go ahead and take out your, your smartphone, your devices. And those of you that are at home, you're obviously watching us. So you may need to swipe left for the comments to come up, okay? So go ahead and swipe left. And then at the bottom left-hand corner, click that share icon and say amen, because you just started witnessing. That was easy. Now, for those of you that are sitting right here in the audience, I want you to open up your Facebook, open your Facebook um, um, application on your devices, on your phones. And once you open it up, if you notice, I was on the live stream, so I have to exit that. Okay. If you notice on the top right-hand corner, there's a little icon that looks like a magnifying glass. That is a search icon. Click on it and then type in Good News TV. That's three words. G-O-O-D space news space TV. And Good News TV should come up, nonprofit organization. And when it does, click on the little thumb the little thumbs up icon, that's the like button. Now, if you're a member of this church, you should have done that a long time ago. So shame on you because you hadn't done it. But we'll let you slide. Go ahead and scroll up or down. Some people say up, some people say down. But scroll, and then you're going to notice that it says Cat Meeting Sabbath, June 12th, and it says live. And then you see one of the most handsome most guys you've ever seen right there on the screen. That's my twin. Go ahead and on the bottom right hand, bottom left hand corner, click on the like button. And then on the bottom right hand corner, click on the share. I'm doing that right now. And then a little window will appear and click on the share now button. And we are witnessing now. Wasn't that easy? Now, if you got lost, that's okay. I'm still transitioning from a track to cassette, so it's okay. <laughs> You're all right. Um, that's an easy way to let others know about camp meeting and to let them hear the message. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and you can use, use this uh, method and also use this um, back in your home church. If you have a Facebook page in your home church, you can do that as well. God bless you all as you witness for the kingdom. Thank you, Pastor Manny, for letting us know how to use technology. Some of us have a, a, a technological heart, but a poorly <laughs> technological mind. Uh, I'm still learning some of this stuff, and thank you for showing us how to do it. And since you were on the line, you certainly, people were paying attention to Pastor Manny because I have a, I have, uh, a pastor's iPad in front of me, and there are a bunch of people who said amen to what's going on. I also have some comments coming from Pastor Mike Soto, who's sending them through to me, and had one from Nebraska, a Colleen, while
watching in Nebraska, wanting to wish us well in Arizona with our camp meeting and lots of wonderful comments. I don't have time to go through them all, but just want to say thank you. There were a bunch of people that were saying thank you to Pastor Steve and Nyla for their tremendous ministry, including Carol Swinier watching from Prescott, who wishes them well. We hate to see them leave, but we are truly thankful for their ministry as well. So it is a privilege now to introduce our musician and singer for the Sabbath hour program. Uh, we were blessed last night to hear Pastor Dan Gerard's wonderful presentation of how God worked in his life. Truly a blessing. My dear friend Merv Williams texted me and told me this is a message everyone needs to hear. And he's right. I agreed with him. I said, well, so Merv, you and I need to go out and pass out his CDs around the neighborhoods because it's true. There are a lot of people that need to hear how God works in individual lives. And as Pastor Dan said, testimony is your greatest witness. No one can really argue that's your story. And I'm truly thankful before Dan gets up to share the message for the hour to introduce uh, Scott Michael Bennett. I'm very grateful for his music. It's been a blessing to our lives here in Arizona a number of times when he sang for us at our uh, evangelistic meeting in Mesa uh, a couple of a year and a half ago. And what a blessing that was. And to have him back for Camp Meeting, I'm so glad you agreed to come, Scott Michael Bennett share with us and then after that beautiful music we'll hear from our speaker of the hour dr dan gerard thanks elder keys it's a blessing to be here the view out the side of this church is beautiful and uh, i'm grateful to be able to see the mountains it's something we don't have of course in michigan my dad lives in tucson and i've just spent the past week with him he's uh, going through a season in his life where he is um, making a transition and uh, my stepmom passed away unexpectedly a few days before Christmas. And so my father has decided to move out of the house he's lived in with her for 32 years and find a place that has a few less of those memories. Now, he and I were looking at the mountains the other day and we were talking about how I cannot wait to be in heaven and to be able to look on a mountaintop. And I, when I want to go there, when I have a desire to visit that mountaintop, I don't have to climb it the hard way. I can just put on some wings and fly there. And my dad said, I'm looking forward to heaven so I can see Ruth Ann again. It's a season of life he's in. It's hard. It's real. The song I'm about to sing celebrates that day. No more night, no more pain. It's a song that actually was requested by someone this weekend, and so I'm going to sing it in response to that request. I'm going to sing it in celebration of my dad's hope in celebration of your hope, in celebration of our hope, that someday camp meeting will be in heaven. I look forward to that day. Now then 
No more night, no more day. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Well, if I were in a Pentecostal church about now, I'd say hallelujah. <laughs> Think I will anyway. Hallelujah. 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 What a joy it is for me to have the opportunity of being with you in this special event, in this special place. I love this couple over here, your conference president and his wife. They are special. Special not because of who they are, but special because of whose they are. And so are you. You are special to God, and you're special to me. There are many contributing factors that enable us to be an overcomer. And in this session, I'm going to be sharing with you one of those factors. We are an overcomer through unceasing prayer. Would you bow your hearts together with me in prayer? Father, we pause to thank you for what we've already experienced with you and one another and this place of worship, how unworthy we are, but our lips and our lives radiate thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son that we might be a part of your family. Thank you, Lord, that there are men and women and young people in this place who have overcome, are overcoming, and will continue to overcome. And so realizing the importance of what I'm about to share from your word, I'm offering myself as a vessel of fresh and new into your hands at this very moment. Please cleanse me with the washing of the blood of your dear Son. Please anoint with the power of your sweet Holy Spirit 
so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, so that your purpose, your design purpose might be accomplished for each of us as individuals, as families, and as a church collective. Because as pride pray, and praises for victories I give, in Christ's name, amen. At the turn of the last century, there was a great spiritual revival that was transpiring in the country of Wales. And church history records that a number of people had become Christians and had united with the family of God. An American traveled across the ocean to investigate that tremendous spiritual phenomenon that was transpiring in the country of Wales. And upon arrival, he asked this question, what's the secret? What's the secret to this great revival that you're experiencing here in this place? The brother in Wales smiled and responded, there is no secret. Ask and you shall receive. That was a true statement then, and it is a true statement today. Because upon investigating every great spiritual deliverance and revival, it soon becomes apparent that each one has been the result of availing prayer on the part of God's people. I'm about to make a statement I hope you never forget. Prayer is not a program. Prayer must be a lifestyle. The Bible says that you and I are to pray without ceasing. So having made that statement, I ask the question of myself and of you, what happens when we as individuals, when we as families, and when we as a church collective pray as we should and as we could? The Bible teaches that when you and I engage in unceasing prayer, there will be at least three results manifested. Three results that enable us to be an overcomer. Number one, when we engage in unceasing prayer, we recognize the presence of God. I read from Acts chapter 4, the A part of verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Don't raise your hands, but how many of you have ever had the opportunity to be present in an assembly of believers during a time of worship, and that place started to shake? Shaking because of the presence of God. I doubt if many of us have ever had that opportunity. In fact, if most of us were in a building during a time of religious convocation and that building started to shake, we probably would be looking for the closest window or door. And if there wasn't one nearby, we might try to make one about the size of our body. But the Bible says when the early church prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. Listen to me closely. As lukewarm as the condition of our Laodicean church age is, you and I must never think for one moment that Jesus has forsaken us. As lukewarm as we have allowed ourselves to become, we need a gripping awareness in our minds and in our hearts that God is still within his church. I take us to Revelation chapter 1 and look at verses 12 and 13. John said, I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And underscore this next phrase. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And then, as if in anticipation 
of John asking what he had just witnessed, Jesus explains in verse number 20. Flowing from the gracious lips of our Savior, John, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. I'm going to share with you. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. My brothers and sisters, the Bible states that just as clearly as the Son of Man mentioned in verse number 13 is Jesus Christ, even so Christ is still in the midst of his church today. Because one of those seven golden candlesticks represents the church of Laodicea, of which you and I are members. And a long time before we allowed ourselves to slide into a lukewarm condition, Jesus made this promise, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you how long? I will be with you all the way even unto the end of the age. Now, that's exciting to me. In fact, that's so exciting. If I were in a Pentecostal church, you know what I'd do again about now, don't you? That's right. Hallelujah. And the promise Jesus made in days past is still a promise for you and for me today. We can be an overcomer. You see, God longs for his presence to fill us as individuals. God longs for his presence to fill us as families. God longs for his presence to fill us as churches. And what we need is an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. We need an awakening. We need an awakening like that experienced by Jacob. Do you remember the story? Let's go to Genesis chapter 28 and refresh our memory. I want to pick up the text as Jacob's dream is coming to a conclusion. Genesis 28 and verse 15, God is talking and says, Jacob, behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land, underscore, for I will not leave thee. You see, the message of hope has not changed. God said it in days past. Jesus said it. And God's Holy Spirit is still saying the very same thing today. I will not leave you. And as if Jacob were about to ask, well, God, how long will you be with me? God continued, Jacob, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. So what's God saying? God's saying, Jacob, it doesn't matter how dismal the circumstances may be. It doesn't matter how dark the clouds may appear. It doesn't matter how strong the army may seem. I want you to understand that when you're traveling through your darkest day, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will be with you all the way to the end. <laughs> and my brothers and sisters, God is saying the same thing to spiritual Israel today as he promised the physical Israel in days past. God's saying, church, it doesn't matter how dismal the circumstances may be. It doesn't matter how dark the clouds may appear. It doesn't matter how strong the army may seem. I want you to understand that when you're traveling through your darkest days, I will be with you. I will not leave you. Question, how many of you have ever heard of the time of Jacob's trouble? My brothers and sisters, we are headed for a time of trouble like this world has never seen before. And God is saying the same thing to spiritual Israel today as he said to physical Israel hundreds of years ago. God wants us to be overcomers. Several years ago, I was talking with a friend, and he shared with me that he had just purchased some new property. Well, I knew that he already had some nice property, and so I asked him, 
why he had purchased this property. And he smiled real big and said, well, Dan, I bought this property so I can escape. Well, I thought I knew what he was talking about, what I wanted to make sure. And so I smile equally as big as I have a tendency to do, and I ask, escape from what? Are you running from the law? And he laughed and said, no, Dan, you know what I'm talking about. I said, no. Why did you purchase this property so you can escape? And he said, well, I purchased this property so that when the time of trouble comes, if I and my family are still alive, we can go there and escape and be safe. And when he said that, I knew I had him right where he needed to be. And so again, I smiled and I said, well, that may be good, but may I ask you a few questions? And one of his favorite sayings was shoot. And I shot. First question, do you believe the devil is smart? And he said, yes, I believe the devil's smart. I said, I agree with you. Second question, do you believe the devil's smarter than you are? He smiled again and said, yes, I believe the devil is smarter than I am. Third question, do you believe that the devil through his demons, is able to be in more than one place at a time? And he hesitated just a little bit and said, yes, I believe the devil is able to be in more than one place at a time. And when he said that, I knew then I had him, right where he needed to be. And so I smiled again and said, I've got one more question. Do you think just by chance, while you were signing the deed, to that new property in the courthouse that there was a little demon looking over your shoulder and the devil already knows where you're planning to escape to? And he looked at me and said, well, you know, Dan, I never thought about that. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, just between you and me and ever you choose to share it with, I'm not worried about the future. Because I'm told as long as I remember how God has led in my past, and as long as I keep my hand in the hand of Jesus, all the demons of Satan cannot touch my life if I am in God's will and I am going through the time of trouble. Amen. Because my personal angel, I believe, can take me to his place of safety and I will be an overcomer. Amen. Now, how did Jacob respond? Look at Genesis 28 and verse 16. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, underscore it, and I knew it not. Am I smiling? Can you see my teeth? I love you. My brothers and sisters, do you understand that God's in this place right now? <laughs> God's here. Do you understand that God can be with you in Walmart? Do you understand that God is with you when you're driving down the interstate and there's road rage going on all around? <laughs> what we need to do is wake up and realize God is in this place. I'm going to say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Secondly, when God's people engage in unceasing prayer, not only will we recognize the presence of God, but we will also receive the power of God. Number two, we will receive the power of God. Back in Acts chapter 4 and the B part of verse number 31, and when they had prayed, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. As Jesus was preparing to leave his disciples and ascend back to heaven, Jesus declared that one of the identifying marks of his followers being filled with the Holy Spirit of God would be the receiving of power into their lives. 
and receive power where they did. I mean, the same Simon Peter who had fear grasped a hold of his vocal cords, the same Simon Peter who denied Jesus three times in a short period of time, after being filled with the power of God's Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, could stand on the street corner in Jerusalem, lift his voice like a trumpet, preach a Pentecostal sermon, and thousands of people be converted and added to the family of God. What made the difference? It was the power of God in his life. But Acts chapter 4, verse 31 informs us that the same group of people that experienced the initial filling of God's Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost are now being filled again with the power of God's Holy Spirit a short time later. And I remember as a young preacher boy reading that and asking, why God? Why? Why, if they were filled with the power of your Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, why did they need to be filled again just a short time later? Late one afternoon, I learned the reason why. I was on my way to visit my girlfriend at that time, looking forward to a nice romantic evening. I was driving my little 1960 Blue Corvair. Any of you remember those cars had an engine in the rear? My hair was slicked back with Vitalis. Now, you young people don't know what Vitalis is, but when I was growing up, that was the stuff. I had on a sharp-looking suit. I mean, I was ready to go. But my little 1960 Blue Corvair had one flaw. The gasoline indicator was broken. So I'm driving down that long, dirt, dusty road, and my Blue Corvair started to spit and sputter. And I knew what had happened. I'd run out of gas. So I walked back down the road and I stood in front of the service station attendant with my head bowed, mumbling, sir, do you have a gasoline can I can put some fuel in? You see, I've run out of gas. And while he didn't say a word, it seemed as though he were yelling at the top of his lungs, young man, you are dressed really nice. You look fairly intelligent. But don't you realize that's why service stations and attendants are in existence? So every now and then, foolish young men like you can stop in and fill up again. And while walking back down that long, dirt, dusty road, shifting that gasoline can from one hand to another as my arms were getting heavier and heavier, it dawned on me why they needed to be filled again. Very simple principle. We cannot live on yesterday's filling. (laughs) Wonderful what God did for us in the past through his power. But my brothers and sisters, you and I need a fresh filling of God's powerful Holy Spirit in our lives every day that we live so that we might be an overcomer. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You see, it's so easy for us to endeavor to walk today on the strength we received yesterday and wonder why every step we take is more and more difficult. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul is dealing with the concept that as Christians, you and I can expect troubles and frustrations. Look at verse number 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed. How often? One more time. How often? One more time. How often? The inward man is renewed or empowered day by day. My brothers and sisters, when you and I allow the power of God's Holy Spirit to fill us, The Bible says we can do how much? My Bible says that Danny Gerard can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the Bible says the very same thing to you. Now, 
If you stay around me long enough, one of the things you will learn about me is that basically I am a very positive individual. I do not ascribe to the philosophy of possibility thinking, but I do believe the Bible, and my Bible says all the promises of God are yea and amen in Jesus Christ. So I am very positive. Several years ago, I was holding a revival crusade, and I was standing in the foyer after one of the services, and I looked down the hallway, and, and there was a young teenage girl coming in my direction. And she had this big smile on her face. And she walked up to me and she said, Pastor Dan, you are so positive in the Lord. I believe if you went fishing for Moby Dick, the great white whale, you would go out in a one-man rowboat with one harpoon and the rest of the boat would be loaded with tartar sauce. <laughs> and I like that. I later learned she got it from Zig Ziglar, but I'm glad she felt that way about me. Because just between you and me and ever you choose to share it with, I believe that God and me together make a majority. <laughs> Amen. And through Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, I am an overcomer. Number three, and finally, when God's people engage in unceasing prayer, not only will we recognize the presence of God, not only will we be filled with the power of God, but thirdly, we will accomplish the purpose of God. Back in Acts chapter 4, the C part of verse 31, and when they had prayed, they spake the word of God with boldness. Question, what is the purpose of God for this church. What is the purpose of God for our families? What is the purpose of God for us as individuals? God's purpose is that you and I be a witness unto Christ and speak the word of God with boldness. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Jesus is speaking to the disciples in, and he says to the disciples today, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Phoenix, Arizona, and in all of the United States of America, and in the whole world, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Isn't that what your Bible says? That's exactly what my King James Version of the Bible says. God has called you and God has called me to be witnesses. Now follow me very closely. As individuals within the body of Christ, as families and as a church collective, we have been called by our Lord to be witnesses. And we can only witness effectively of that which we possess. We cannot witness about the presence of God if we do not recognize the presence of God. We cannot witness about the power of God if we are not receiving the power of God. You see, without question, the world you and I live in needs to be penetrated with the life-changing essence of the good news of Jesus Christ. But the question is this, how can Christ's message be effectively delivered until we have first prayed? When I was in Bible college in seminary, one of my professors shared a story that had a tremendous impact on my ministry. He said that there was a, a renowned pastor who decided to preach a series of sermons on the subject of prayer. He went to his library, he did all of his research, he got all of his notes down in proper homiletical order. And on the Sunday morning, he was to begin that series of sermons on the subject of prayer. Just as he was about to rise from his chair and walk to the pulpit, 
God's Spirit pressed him back down and asked him this question. How dare you preach on prayer, seeing you have not prayed about what you should preach? That question of God's Holy Spirit so impacted that pastor, he walked off the platform, stood in front of that congregation of hundreds of people, and asked their forgiveness as he confessed his error. He turned and knelt at the altar and began praying. That scene so affected that congregation that without music, that without an appeal song, they rose as one united family, streamed down the aisles, knelt around their pastor, and began praying. A revival broke out in that community that lasted for weeks. They became overcomers. <laughs> so again, I ask the question, how dare we, you know, I'm still smiling. You still, I, I love you. But, but my friends, and what I'm about to say is not meant to be critical. It's not meant to be judgmental. But we have evangelistic meetings and, and we, we print up brochures and, and we have radio spots and television ads to inform the community about what's going to happen. But how much time do we spend in prayer? So the question I'm asking myself and I'm asking you is this, how dare we try to tell the community about Christ without first talking to Christ about the community? Are you listening to me? When you and I begin to pray to Christ about the community, more of the community will listen to us about our Christ. <laughs> and we will be overcomers to the glory of God and the benefit of God's church. So who is our example? Jesus, right? Do you remember how Jesus started his earthly ministry? He started it prayer and fasting. And he was an overcomer, right? Three times the enemy came to him and, and Jesus responded each time it is written and Satan left him for a little season. He overcame. Constantly in those three plus years of ministry, we see Christ praying and he overcame. He overcame and he overcame. And at the conclusion of his ministry, we see him in the Garden of Eden, kneeling and his sweat dropping like great drops of blood to the ground. And I'm sure the enemy was there, but he overcame. And in the most majestic position he ever assumed, suspended between the heavens and the earth, hanging on that old rugged cross, his last words were in the form of a prayer. Father, forgive Danny Gerard because he doesn't know what he's doing. It's finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And I believe with all my mind and all my heart that every angel in heaven started rejoicing <laughs> because Jesus had overcome. My brothers and sisters, you and I can be overcomers as we spend time in unceasing prayer. Mark chapter 13, beginning in verse 31, the Lord is talking and he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take you heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming. I don't know when, but Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming for overcomers. And as you and I spend time in unceasing prayer, 
when he comes in the clouds of glory, we can look up and we can begin chorusing together, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he's going to take us to heaven. And he's going to introduce us personally to the Father. And the Father's going to look at you, and, and the Father's going to look at me, and he's going to say, well done. Enter into the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Can I say hallelujah one more time? <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that, aren't you? As we spend time in prayer, we can be overcomers. <laughs> Jesus made the statement in John 16 and verse 24. Ask and you shall receive. And as if someone was about to inquire, well, Jesus, why is it so important? I believe Jesus could hardly wait to speak the closing words. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Is there anybody else here besides me that wants you joyful? We do, don't we? And through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we can be overcomers. Unceasing prayer? Absolutely. And I encourage you, don't stop praying now. As my little granny used to tell us boys growing up, boys, stay prayed up, packed up, and ready to go. Amen? Amen. Father God, thank you so very much for individuals, men and women, boys and girls, down through the ages who have overcome as they engaged in unceasing prayer. Thank you for individuals in this very congregation and individuals who are viewing online through the media who are overcoming through unceasing prayer. But Father, I ask that if there is one individual who's heard this message, this very simple message, that has not allowed himself or herself to realize that prayer is not a program, but it must be a lifestyle, that right now, your sweet spirit will give unction so that from this moment onward, unceasing prayer will be an overcoming agent in lives because this prayer I pray and praises for victories I give in the praying overcoming name of Jesus and all God's people say Amen, Amen. Your love and your mighty 
the church today. Then in an age when darkness gripped the earth, the just shall live by faith was learned. Reformation fires burned. In later years, the great revivals came when the saints would seek the Lord and pray. Oh, once again, we need that holy flame. The challenge of today. So come, Holy Spirit. Dark is the hour. We need your filling. Yeah. We need your love and your mind. Let us pray. Sweet Holy Spirit, we know you are in, in this room here, but we also know that you are in every room, every household, every church, wherever there are people gathered in your name. So today we want to thank you for the message, for the reminder that we are to pray without ceasing. So, Father, as we, again, try to find, seek your face from time to time, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, whatever the time and place it might be, we pray, Father, that uh, you will continue to be patient with us, that you will continue to forgive us, for many a times we come short. But today we want to commit to you. We want to accept the invitation of praying without ceasing. For we know that is where we get our power. And that's when we become overcomers. So bless us all. Bless your church here and there, wherever we there it may be. And help us, Father, to walk or to continue walking on this journey unto the final day where we can all go to heaven and we be with you and become finally complete overcomers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ramirez, for leading us in our closing prayer. And thank you. Pastor Dan, and thank you, Scott Michael, for leading us in a beautiful, beautiful worship uh, time together here at uh, the local venue here in Phoenix, but also for each one online. I have had so many people comment on how blessed they were from all over. Uh, Christy Cantor, some of you know Dennis, good friend of mine and his wife, commented from Co Cottonwood, very thankful. And um, there were lots of praise for Pat's beautiful flute solo, by the way. I didn't get to say that earlier. 
and uh, Melba from Paradise Valley is wishing each of us happy Sabbath here as well. Uh, good friends, hiking buddies of mine, Bowie and Brad from Kingman are wishing us well in our camp meeting as well. And a good friend of mine from Yuma, Esteban, he's, we always talk when we get together. Also thankful for our wonderful camp meeting. And there's just name after name. I have a whole page of names of people who are thanking Arizona for doing a virtual camp meeting so they can watch at home. Uh, my last comment to you today is God bless you, but I also need to tell you this. We have a special program at 545. Scott Michael Bennett is going to be leading us in a concert. Um, I probably am going to say it anyway. Bring your friends. They will be glad they're here. We're trying to keep the numbers down, trying to stay in harmony with our pandemic policy, but bring your friends. They're going to love, love this special event. And also again tonight at 7 o'clock, we will be blessed again with Dr. Dan Gerard as he shares with us our final mess, his final message for this part of camp meeting. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Hopefully you continue. Those of you who are watching on Good News TV and YouTube and, and Facebook, continue to watch this program. Continue to send in your comments. We have people from Window Rock, Chinle, Kinle, she always plays on the reservation as well as Tucson and Yuma and so forth, sending in comments of how they've been blessed by the program. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you at 545. Hi, I'm Luke Skelton, General Manager for Good News TV. It has been our honor to bring the virtual camp meeting experience to you via live stream on our website, Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. If you would like to obtain any DVDs of the powerful messages you have seen, or if you have any questions about camp meeting, please give us a call. It is the mission of Good News TV to spread the love of Jesus Christ and the truths of his word, as well as connecting viewers with a local church family. We broadcast Christ-centered messages of hope 24 hours a day on seven TV stations throughout Arizona in both English and Spanish. Please help us with our mission by giving generously to this ministry. To donate, please visit our website at mygoodnewstv.com or give us a call at 480-264-1116. Thank you for your participation in this year's virtual camp meeting, and thank you for your prayers and support of this media outreach ministry. God bless you.